Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse today. Let's get tanked. Yeah, what the heck is he talking about now? Yeah, it's a it's a new show for those of you so inclined. It's all about uh, my aquariums and the fish keeping hobby in general and my experiences and that kind of thing. And it's called Tank Talk. This is episode one, and today we're basically just going to go over uh, all the tanks that I have and what I use them for, and maybe how I've set them up, that kind of thing. So. And then when we're done with that, we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, uh, some of the other stuff I've now done with the with the aquariums. All right, so it's time for the aquarium tour. Yay, I know all of you have been looking forward to that. So this is my first tank that I set up. This is a 20-gallon long or a 20-gallon breeder, as they call it. I'm going to try to kneel down here. To, oh, my God, my knees are shot to give you a better shot. In fact... Better than that, I'm gonna get my little stool. And we're gonna have a seat here. And we're gonna take a look at some of these aquariums. So this is my first tank that I did. And this is using the father fish or the Wallstead method, which is basically a layer of uh, organic soil, and, uh, about an inch, and then uh, and the father fish supplement, the little nitrate the little chemicals they add and then uh, two inches of pool filter sand uh, and then you plant it you plant the hell out of it this tank has been doing very well you can see it's thriving I've got guppies in here that are mating and I've got a plethora of uh, shrimp back there you can see one of the little shrimps and he's hanging out and I've got some snails and I've got uh, some planted items in here I got a lot of plants that are thriving don't worry the snails don't eat the plants they uh, and you can see the shrimp back there hanging out on my filter see them just barely see them back there uh, this tank is doing remarkably well there's a little baby uh, guppy tanks and there's a little tiny one next to it. I don't even know if you can see it uh, this tanks doing extremely well and I've got some uh, frog bit on the top to help them with the nitrogen. And you can see I've gone from having covers on my tanks to not having covers on my tanks. Uh, I just think it's better this way. This way the tank can breathe. Uh, there can be oxygen exchange. And the frog bit does not like a cover because it creates uh, humidity. And the frog bit doesn't like to get wet on the top. The leaves start to rot. So... I do have covers for all these tanks, and they were not cheap. They're like 30 bucks a cover for each one of these glass uh, tops. But I just decided, no, nah, it's better to leave them uncovered. And I have the I have the the covers if I need them, which right now I don't. So uh, this was my first planted and dirted tank, and while it's worked out okay, I don't like a dirted tank, and uh, and because Whenever you go to move plants, like if I went to move that plant right now, that plant is so deeply rooted in that dirt that if I went to remove that to transplant it or move it around, I would basically ruin, I would cloud the tank, the dirt would come up and it would just basically ruin the tank. So I understand why people want to use dirt, a dirted tank, but there are substrates that are better, look at that little baby fish right there. It's a healthy tank. There are substrates that are easier to deal with, and then don't ruin your tank when you go to when you go to uh, you know move plants or whatnot. All right, so this tank over here, and pardon my mess, this tank over here is another 20 gallon long uh, or breeder tank, if you want to call it. Now you notice this one has a sponge filter. Now. When I worked for an aquarium store back from the time I was about 12 or 13, under gravel filters were the thing. And I stand by that I think under gravel filters are some of the best filters you can get on a fish tank. Now, we, for those of you who don't agree with that, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. But I just like under gravel filters. I always had healthy tanks with them, always had good luck with them. This one was my first... <clears throat> 
Well, actually, this tank I did try to plant with dirt. And it was a hot mess, and that's when I discovered, yeah, you go to move the plants, and all the dirt comes up, and you don't want that. So I came across an article on using baked clay as the soil, and then putting whatever you want on top of that to cap it. And so baked clay is basically kitty litter. Well, not anymore. It used to be the kitty litter you'd buy from Walmart. They would bake in an oven and it would kind of seal it up, but they don't do that anymore. So now what I use is a product called Safety Zorb, and you can get that from Tractor Supply. And uh, basically it's, it's, it, it's the stuff they throw down on a shop floor when you have an oil leaker. It's basically baked clay. So what I did is I use that as my substrate. So that's that, that's that book right below the, yeah, right below the, the uh, gravel there is the baked clay. And basically you can, you can add root tabs to that or you can add, you know, um, pota or, uh, phosphates and you can add iron and you can add whatever. Because the idea is I want all planted tanks. And then I went over the top of that, and you can see it's a healthy tank. Look, you can see little babies swimming around in there. Um, again, you know, guppies breed prolifically, especially if you put males and females there. It's funny how that happens. And I decided to go with gravel in this tank. And you can see the plants are doing okay, but they could be doing better. And I just don't like the look of this tank. Um, I'm getting a bit of algae on the side here, but the snails are making quick work of that. I got a bunch of snails in here. Again, snails are good for your tank. I love snails. And uh, there's a couple of them just gliding over the surface and doing what snails do. But I'm not happy with this tank. I'm happy with the fact that it's healthy. Again, I got some Amazon frog bit. Not from Amazon, the company. That's just the name of the plant, Amazon frog bit at the top. And that You see how it puts its little tentacles down in the water and that helps absorb nitrates out of the water and keep it, you know, keep it clean. But you can see my plants are just, they're sending off runners, but they're not, and they're, they're purling. You see a little purling on some of these, but they're just not, they're just not got phenomenal growth. And I don't like the look of the gravel. So we're going to change that. Um, I'm probably going to end up going with sand I'm going to take the gravel, take the fish out of here, take the gravel out, redo the plant with sand, and then, you know, re use cycled medium. And I've got a single under gravel filter on there. So the idea is, is that your substrate becomes your filter. And it works really well. You can see how sparkling clear the water is. All right, so let's work our way over to my final 20 gallon in this room. And again, look at this tank. You see all the fish in there? See if you can spot the babies swimming around. Look, there's a tiny little baby right there. Look at that. More little babies in the back. Look at the plants. Look how healthy they are. This is my first attempt at scaping, at, you know, making a plant look, or making a, a tank look pretty. And these are just rocks I found outside and washed them and cleaned them up. And Here's a piece of driftwood with some uh, java fern on it. That's a big old... Uh, sword back there, sword plant, and then here's a plastic piece of decoration I had. And look, <laughs> Amazon Frogbit is taking over this tank and cutting out the light, so the fish love it, uh, and it's putting its tentacles down into the water to get the nitrates out. And again, under gravel filter. Look, look at all the snails I have in this tank. Yeah, it's a the snails help clean up the, the poop. They clean up the debris, as they say. All these tanks are doing remarkably well, with the exception of this one. It's just not growing like I want it to. And plants are not cheap. They're easy to keep, but they're not cheap. And then down here, this is my bucket of safety worm. This is what this stuff looks like, right? So it's just basically baked clay. And, um, yeah, you put this in the bucket. This is your soil in your tank. And what I did with this one is I used root tabs. So I put the sand on top of the, on top of this. This is what the roots grow into, okay? Because they don't grow well in sand. But sand looks pretty and it's easy to keep clean. So they grow, the roots grow into this. So you put your supplemental stuff in here. So that can be root tabs or it could be, 
you know, fertilizer, whatever you want to use, laterite or whatever. We're going to cover that in a minute. And uh, I just keep that available uh, underneath so I can, you know, add, uh, create a new tank if I want to. Now on to our 40-gallon breeder tank. And I love these 40-gallon tanks. I wish I'd have bought all 40-gallon tanks. But the 20-gallon tanks are fine, too. This is my first attempt at a 40-gallon planted tank and it is turning out yeah I know it's cloudy but there's a reason for that we'll get to that it's normal cloudy water in an aquarium that's been started up and this aquarium has been up less than a month is normal that's the beneficial bacteria these are bacterial blooms that you're seeing these little creatures in the water that are actually converting fish poop and waste into valuable you know things and coating the surface with beneficial bacteria this is what you want and this is a heavily planted tank, and the plants are doing remarkably well. Now, this sand is the black diamond blasting sand. I wanted to try a black substrate on my tank, and I went with this. And then underneath that is the clay, is that safety zorb. But you notice it's got a red tinge to it. And that is because I use this pro uh, product called laterite. And laterite is basically an iron potassium it's a bunch of chemicals made for uh, you know uh, to go into your substrate so I mix that in with the clay so that these plants when they put their roots down into the substrate here they would have something to feed off of besides fish waste because eventually fish waste is what they uh, they end up you know it becomes a whole ecological cycle in a, in a tank and um, you can see I've got some uh, I got some swords in here. I got some uh, that's a molly. I got guppies. I've got some I've got some garamis back there that like to hide. I got two of those in here. Those blue garamis are just beautiful fish, and I love garamis. And they're they get along great with the other tank mates. They don't get along with each other. And there's another garami in here somewhere, but he's hiding right now. He doesn't like to come out unless it's feeding time. Uh, but yeah, it's again a healthy tank. I got babies if I can find one here I'll show you the babies and um, Yeah, I don't see them. the babies are hiding down in the back. They, they do come out when it's feeding time Now I'm concerned about my other garami. I don't know why he's hiding but uh, uh, But yeah, there's my mollies in there So a cloudy tank is does not mean it's not healthy It just means it's still cycling and it takes a while to cycle a tank now, I've got a little bit of Amazon frog bit on the top here, but you see it's not doing as well as my other tanks. And that's because I don't have a lot of nitrates in this tank yet. It, you know, it's not done cycling. So when it's done cycling, it'll, it'll start uh, doing its thing. The water will clear, and then the frog bit will go crazy pulling nitrates out of the water. Um, and then I've got uh, these little planters in here, and then I just take these ivy, so I have a couple of ivies. These are my sacrificial ivies. And this one and then uh, this uh, this one here. I just take cuttings off of those and then I put them I put them into these into these planters and then they help pull nitrates out of the water too. The whole idea behind these planted tanks is to have a natural ecosystem so you're not having to deal with water changes and stuff like that. The tanks balance themselves and you can see, oh, there's some little babies back there if you look real close. So these tanks pretty much take care of themselves. Once you get them set up and cycled, well, there's a lot of little babies back here if you look. You see them swimming around. And um, you notice how the water has this shimmer effect, right? Well, that's due to these, these little uh, floodlights. These are little 10-watt floodlights that you get from Amazon. They come two to a package for 20 bucks. And they have a, a plug on them. You just plug them into the wall, and then I've just hung them from hooks. And you can see, you don't get that shimmer effect down here because these are LED lights, right? These are, well, these are LED aquarium lights. These, you get that beautiful shimmering effect. See how it shimmers? The light, the waves moving across the water, and I just love that. So I love these lights. For 20 bucks, you can't get better aquarium lights than that. Now this one has a heater. There's my garami coming to the surface. There's the other one right here. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful fish? My God, these guys are beautiful when they get in the light. Look at that. Look at that shimmer. And he's very friendly. He likes to, he likes to come and say hello. The other one, not so much. Uh, but 
look at that beautiful shimmering effect you get off these tanks, right? Uh, yeah, I just I cannot say enough good things about these lights, and they're they're twenty bucks for a set of two. Uh, now these lights, though, if you put your hand here, these lights are putting out one hundred and sixty degrees freedom units in heat. So not only do they put light into the tank, but they heat up the room as well. Now I went ahead and put a heater in here. I like to keep my tanks warm and my room typically does not stay that warm. So I like keeping my tanks about 74, 75 degrees. So I keep a heater in here. I think the fish like it a little bit warmer. But uh, yeah, there's my uh, there's one of my 40 gallon tanks. This tank is still cycling. This again is another 40 gallon planted tank. Now in this tank I went with the safety zorb substrate. If I can see that down at the bottom. And on the top is play sand. And this sand, oh my god, I rinsed, normally you get quick creep play sand and it's fairly clean. But for whatever reason, I washed and washed and washed the sand. It just took forever to get it to be moderately not cloudy. You can see I got some snails back there working hard. And I've just got some plants just kind of dropped in here right now. And I'm sorry you can't see very clearly in the tank. The plants are doing well. The fish are healthy. Don't worry. A cloudy tank is not a sick tank. There's no poisonous stuff in here. And you can see I've got my Amazon frog bit in here. And it's uh, it's putting its tentacles down in the water, getting the nitrates out. This is just a matter of time and patience. And you've got to... You gotta just have some patience, and uh, it may take 30 days, it may take 45, but eventually this tank will clear. Uh, but it is a, if you're an impatient person like I am, it can really be trying on your patience because I want to aquascape this tank, but I can't see it to aquascape it. So, yeah, again, I've got those two 10 watt uh, LED floodlights up here, and you can see again. Well, if you could, you can see the shimmer on the bottom of the tank. And again, all my tanks have these little planters in them. And look, it's already look, it's already grown roots out through the side of this, so I can't even get this out of the uh, planter anymore. So, what do plants do? Well, they help pull nitrates out of the water. If it's not clear by the end of January, and today is like the seventh or eighth of January, uh, I will. I will make sure that I do uh, something different with it. I'm gonna. I may change out the the uh, sand uh, for something else. Now this has an under gravel filter as well. And you talked about hard time finding an under gravel filter, and expensive. Where these under gravel filters cost about twenty bucks. These were fifty dollars, sixty dollars a piece. And I needed two of them, for one for each tank, because this one has also got an under gravel filter. You can tell because there's a little risers. So they uh, they don't like calling these under gravel filters anymore. They call them plenums, right? So basically, it just raises the bottom of the tank and creates a dead space underneath it. So water can go down through your substrate, through your sand, through your safety zorb. It uses this as a filter media, and then it pumps out water through these outlets and keeps the water circulating, creates a healthy environment. It's called an anoxic uh, environment. That's a low oxygen level environment. And I've never had trouble with uh, under gravel filters. They work great and they keep you from having to spend a lot of money on hang on bag filters and canister filters. Anyway, check it out. There's a bunch of stuff out there. This one as well has an under gravel filter. You can see the the riser pipes in the back uh, that help uh, move the, the water from, you know, flow it through and then under. And in this tank, I use the Father Fish, if I can find it. I ordered this from father fish when I was going to do my planted tanks. Let me do this without knocking everything down. There's the uh, here's the florin based laterite powder that I used in this tank under the uh, on, with the clay. And this stuff is the father fish supplement and it stinks. I mean because it's basically you know composted stuff and chemicals and whatnot. So you mix one teaspoon per gallon. You mix with one inch of soil or in my case the safety zorb and then you cap it with two inches of sand and this provides all the minerals and nutrients that your soil will need for years so this is another 20 gallon tank and this is a 20 gallon long or a breeder tank and you can see guppies are doing what guppies do best 
I have not touched this tank in over a year. This is not a planted tank. This is a. These are all plastic plants. Uh, I got some snails in here. You see my guppies. I got a placostomus in here somewhere. Um, I got a little bit of frog bit on the on the surface to help with uh, nitrates. I've got some. I've got some. Uh, uh, some of this growing out of the side. The ivy. Now this one has a hang on back filter, no under gravel filter. And this tank is just thriving. I changed the uh, I changed the tank out about three, four months ago. But I kept the trick is to keep the substrate. Don't wash it, don't do nothing to it. You can rinse it out, but don't you this substrate is full of beneficial bacteria. And that's the key to these tanks. Now why is my why is my snail falling over? There you go. Um, yeah, and that's the problem when you stick your hand in a tank, you get it covered with frog bit. I hope that snail's not dead. He was flipped over. Um, anyway, yeah, but you see all the babies I got in here. Let's see all the fry. And that's what guppies do. They just breed prolifically. You, you, there's no stopping them from, from breeding. There's my pleco. He's coming out to say hi. See him? Any he cutie? He's just a little bitty baby. And, uh, but yeah, there he, there he goes across the front. Uh, this is the kind of gravel I like. This is small, uh, fine gravel. And, uh, but you can see how hard it is to see the fish against this kind of gravel. That's why I prefer a, a tank that has, uh, sand in it, uh, rather than gravel. But I like the look of this one. So, this is my other 20 gallon. Now this tank I have had, oh god, this tank's got to be 15 years old. This has always been my, my pride and joy tank. This is my 55 gallon uh, tank. And it's long, so it's what, it's a 4 foot, 5 foot tank. But they're very narrow. So if I had this to do over, I would get a 75 gallon, which is a little bit um, wider on the side, from side to side. Uh, and as you can see, this you see my red shrimp down there, my cherry red shrimp. You see my guppies. You see my more cherry red shrimp. You see it full of snails. There's another baby. It's got, it's got, yeah, a, a proliferation of life. Look, my uh, my pleco has come out to say hello. See him there on the side. Uh, look at this tank. Uh, this, and I've got a couple of uh, sponge filters in it. This tank is healthy as hell. See him, see him eat the algae off the frog bit? Covered with frog bit. I've got two lights in here uh, because I didn't have a place to put the other one. I've got some bamboo, lucky bamboo coming out. And again, another planter. Again, I use these to get, look, look at that shrimp working on that filter, getting that, getting that detritus and the food off of there. Now this tank was a gravel bottom tank. No under gravel filter. And it had plastic plants in it, and I got to. Th this was a. This was a. This plant was supposed to be. I wanted to try these different methods of having an aquarium. So, I had all of this beneficial. Look at all that beneficial bacteria down there, all that mulm. And this had really, you know, thick pieces of gravel and stone and whatnot. And so I had a wild idea one day just to take pool sand and pull everything out of the tank, which I did, put pool sand over the top of it, and then that would mix in with this beneficial bacteria that was in the gravel. And I thought, well, I'll see if I can grow plants. And well, <laughs> it's growing plants like gangbusters. Uh, the breeding in this tank is prolific. You can't stop guppies from breeding. Look, if you look back there, I have... I have tons of babies in here, and I don't worry about taking them out because if you give the fry places to hide, like you know plants and whatnot, the little areas, they'll be fine. Uh, the shrimp are thriving in this tank. I didn't do anything special. I've got some uh, some new mollies I got the other day. I got some, this beautiful fish. I've got uh, a couple of those sword tails there, and then I've got a beautiful fish. If it, there he is, right there, or she is. Isn't that a gorgeous fish? And look at my, look at my guppies. Look at the coloration on that guppy, and the the tail on him. Uh, I've just got some beautiful fish in here. I don't do anything special with my guppies. I just let them be and let them breed. And 
I don't try to you know create one strain from another I don't do that I do have a heater in this tank and uh, I let the water level get too low and I gotta say this Hiker heater turned itself off uh, when the water level got too low so my temperature in here is a little bit low but it's, it's only 71 but it's coming up but yeah this is my uh, it's one of my favorite community tanks and this is my first test with uh, using shrimp and this guy is always hungry he's looking for food uh, and uh, the shrimp are just they're doing fine uh, the, and I've got snails in here you can see a snail back there the, the best thing I can tell people about tanks is don't overthink them uh, plant them uh, put fish in them uh, put shrimp in them you know for your cleanup crew and just let and feed them and let them go crazy just let them be fish tanks and uh, do I do water changes on my tanks no I don't believe water changes never have uh, I do believe in water changes to get rid of uh, if you've got a, a uh, let me be clear if you've got a nitrite spike or something like that sometimes you have or you get ammonia way too much ammonia in a tank you need to do a 50% water change to change and that but that's only initially when you set up your tanks once I get my tank set up and established, I never do water changes. Never. I, I top them off and I treat the water. Uh, they use chloramines in our water here, or chloramates or whatever they call them. All right, and this is my final tank. Well, not mine. This is the spouse's tank. So this is like a 29 or 20, 39 gallon bow front aquarium. I'm not a big fan of bow front aquariums because they give you an unrealistic you know they magnify they turn into a big magnifying thing and this thing needs some water in it but um, yeah this is our goldfish tank but my spouse loves goldfish and just be prepared if you ever buy a black more goldfish they will change color you see them turning gold uh, I, I'm not a real big fan of goldfish because one um, they're genetically modified and they're they have trouble with digestion and that kind of thing you have to take special account you're feeding now you're only seeing two of them and again this is a plastic planted tank and with pretty you know green gravel but um, oh there's one back there in the house there he comes there's Goldie and then we have another calico in here uh, there it is it's, they're all coming out now they've seen me so they think it's feeding time in fact I probably will give them some blood worms today because blood worms help with their digestion because uh, they have really short digestive tracts, you got to be careful with goldfish. That's usually what kills them is, is they get swim bladder or whatever from being fed the wrong foods. So uh, this unit has a hang on back filter, and I just change the, I, I just take the sponge and I rinse it out once a month in uh, tank water uh, into a bucket and then put it right back in, and it just helps keep the particulate matter out of the water. And then in here somewhere is a placostomus as a cleanup crew. The reason I don't plant a goldfish tank is because they like to dig in the substrate and they just and they like to eat lots of plants. But these guys are healthy, they're they're very happy fish and you know they're doing well. And this tank is in the living room so that we can, you know, get a get a view of, of fish whenever uh, whenever we want to see. But this is our last tank. Now we're gonna we're gonna be putting together some more tanks uh, in the parents retreat. And there's the Brady Bunch playing. Uh, and um, we're going to probably put a 75 gallon in the parents' retreat once we get the remodeling done in that part of the house. But um, yeah, the, and these guys are friendly. They'll come right up to me when I put my hand in the tank. They trust me. They'll let me pet them. They let me pick them up and move them. They, they'll eat right out of my hand. Um, yeah, and, they're, and they know, you know, they know we're there. I just noticed how dark his one eye is on there and I hope he's not blind they both seem to be that way that looks like he doesn't have a pupil though doesn't it whereas that one you can see so anyway and you can see the trouble the black moor has swimming this is why I don't like these fancy goldfish per se because I just think they I just hope they don't suffer now these things will live a long time so be prepared if you're gonna get goldfish and you put them in a good healthy tank and keep the, the water clear and keep them fed They'll live a long time. I've had goldfish last five, six years. And uh, usually they'll die because of swim bladder or, or something like that. And they get along so well with other fish. 
and they're just so friendly. They come up and they say hi to you every day. So if you're considering goldfish, are they dirty fish? Nah, not any more than any others. I mean, you know. But do I gravel back these tanks? No, I don't do any kind of maintenance on these tanks. Now, after a year, because I don't have uh, an undergravel filter and I really don't have a cleanup crew in here, I may uh, drain the tank, uh, clean, the, clean the gravel really well, and then refill it. But that's maybe once a year we have to do that. And we never have trouble with, with this tank getting dirty or, or not being able to see the fish. But yeah, there's the goldfish tank. So there you go. There's a tour of all of my tanks and how I have them set up. And you can see now behind me the two tanks I was having trouble with um, are clearing up, most definitely. Um, still a little hint of cloudiness. Um, and now one tank, the end tank that looked like milk <laughs> the other day when I filmed it, uh, has now got a, uh, I put a piece of driftwood in there. Uh, a few weeks ago, and it has now started to release tannins into the water. So it has a kind of a reddish yellow, red, yellowy reddish glow to it. Now those tannins will settle out of the water as well, or I can remove them with filtration. But I'm not worried about them right now. They kind of add to the look of that tank, give it kind of a like a, 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 a what they call a dark water tank look, and I think it's kind of appealing. So. I spent a lot of time in front of those tanks in the evening. I now have my recliner put in place so I can just sit there and stare at the fish. I've also put some shields up here on these lights, just pieces of cardboard to keep the light from shining in your eyes as you're sitting in the recliner looking at the tanks. And it directs the light directly into the tanks, so it helps with that. It's a poor man's solution to... Uh, you know, getting those little, uh, what are those little flappers they make for lights and, you know. Plus those lights, <clears throat> those lights are not cool. They they run at about 165 degrees freedom units uh, Fahrenheit um, when they run. And, you know, while they're small and they only consume about, I think it's 10 watts per light, uh, they put out a lot of heat as LEDs tend to. So uh, keep that in mind. They will heat up your room or will add to the heat load in the summertime as well. Keep that in mind. So right now I have a, uh, I put into this room a, uh, a little, uh, a Vornado is the brand I like of the forced air heaters, room heaters, or, or uh, space heaters as they call them. Uh, they're just well made. They tend to really distribute the heat in the room really well for a small little heater. They're about, a good one is about, 40 to 50 bucks and then they're all the way up to a couple of hundred but I wouldn't pay more than about 80 bucks for a Vornado they're a really good little heating unit uh, and I've got one in here now because we had a problem when the temperatures dipped so low this last week I mean we got down to I think 14 was our lowest pipes froze again of course you knew that was going to happen but what was really disturbing is we uh, the tanks the lower tanks here got into the uh, upper 50s and freedom units and that's not good for tropical fish and they were just basically immobilized they they weren't swimming they were they were at the top they were maintaining their their you know their stability their the buoyancy but that was it they weren't swimming around they weren't eating when fish don't eat something's wrong and it, the water just got too cold because the temperature of the room even though it was 70 or 71 those tanks are, you know, they're a thermal mass and they're close to the floor and the cold from the floor was drawing the heat out of them. So you got to understand how, how heat and cold move uh, to understand why you could have a room at 70 or 75 degrees and your tanks can be as low as 59. If you live in a drafty house like I do, with the wind getting under the house and the f floor being cooler, it does tend to draw the heat out of the out of the room and into the floor. Heat naturally wants to go from warmer to colder, just the way it works. So I lost two fish, and um, I learned a valuable lesson. Put heaters on all your tanks, even when you live in South Texas. Fish will handle the heat better than they handle the cold. At least tropical fish will. So there you go. I could blather on all day about fish and fish keeping and whatnot and myself, you know, 
Uh, but uh, hopefully you folks out there that are in the hobby are going to enjoy these uh, fish episodes, these aquarium episodes that I'm going to be making. And uh, wherever I can sneak tech in, I will in these videos to show you what the latest gadget I'm using is. And, uh, but anyway, uh, there you go. We, we hope you found this episode entertaining and informative. Uh, please leave your comments down in the comments section. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out. Donate if you're so inclined because, you know, we have PayPal, Patreon, YouTube join function or become a YouTube premium member and we all get a piece of the pie. You know the routine. We really don't get much of that pie anymore, but it's not about the money, right? It's about having fun and uh, maybe uh, sharing my uh, experience with some of you out there. So thanks again for coming to see us and don't forget, we'll see you on the other side.